We are entering the era of the new space race. But it's not about Moon anymore. It's actually about AI. You see, on Tuesday, Microsoft announced integration of GPT-4 into their search engine, Bing. So users practically have ChatGPT on steroids as part of their search results. However, Google did not just take the hit. They actually had an answer for it. Next day, they announced something called BARD as part of their Live from Paris event. And now those AI search engines are all over the news. This is a technology war, and it's between tech giants right now, like Google and Microsoft. So it is very likely that we are going to see huge brands like Samsung and Apple entering the game very soon. So let's talk about it. Remember Siri? Well, you're going to feel old when you're going to realize that Siri was actually released first in 2011. Then you have Cartana, Alexa, Google Assistant, and Bixby. In 2021, Cartana was actually repositioned to be an AI-based productivity experience in Microsoft 365, just because it wasn't gaining much traction. So this Tuesday, Microsoft announced its new Bing. And basically, it is their search engine Bing. However, it will be powered with ChatGPT built in it. But the difference is, it's not just ChatGPT. They'll be using a GPT-4 model. And the difference here is GPT-3, it uses 180 billion parameters. However, GPT-4 actually uses 100 trillion. So according to my math, there's no way I'm calculating this. So it is a huge difference. And big part of the news is that their new version of the Edge browser, which no one uses, today they, it will have the AI features built in. So let's first look into the Bing itself. So this is their page introducing the new Bing. You can ask real questions, get complete answers, chat and create. Basically, chat GPT, but on steroids. You actually get to see this part, which is see examples. And there are different prompts that are available just to witness. That actually, you can already come and join the waitlist of Bing. All you would have to do is to log in, but the best part is you can access the new Bing faster by clicking on the button and it will drag you to the spot where you can set Microsoft as default. It is just a Chrome extension for your Google Chrome if you're using it. And you can scan the QR code and install the Microsoft Bing app on your phone. I would really advise to log in there as well. They haven't specified it there. Just, to, just for them to see the tracking login on everywhere you install Bing. So to be the first on the wait list. So let's actually try one of the things. So for example, arts and crafts ideas with instructions for a toddler. Perfect. And okay, so it gives us these examples here on the right spot and it looks like a widget. And it's actually much more appealing in the Microsoft Edge, which I'll show later on. However, let's take a look at it now. So in here, you have all the results. But the best part is, and that is completely different from ChatGPT, you have those numbers attached to some of the sentences. And this just shows that Bing has taken some of the results from actual web sources, and it gives them credit. I'm a student myself, so I have to reference everything that I do. And referencing ChatGPT as is is not an option for me. Well, just to get excluded. So you have this part, you can just click in your reading one, my internet is wonderful, so that's not going to happen. And you have all the references at the bottom here. Now, this is the new part in the AI. This is something I have seen in a software called Vidic. And they have an AI coach that is specifically for video editing. But here as well, so you have suggested prompts. So that is basically just to stop you from thinking. So basically AI does everything for you. You can literally click here, show me more crafts with cardboard boxes, and you can continue going on. This is their way of you staying on the platform. And if you actually click this icon with a question mark, you get to see more things, but it's specifically about Bing. So tell me more about Bing. Why won't Bing respond to some topics? And every time you refresh, it gives new answers. What you see now is a screenshot from the presentation. And we can see things like ChatGPT, Jasper, that is just another writing tool, a generative AI. And you would see in the search, Google is taking the lead. So 
from this, we can deduct that Bing will be basically taking all the generative AI features and taking all the search features, and it will give you all in one solution. So that is something that I'm really eager to see. But here is when things get interesting. Google actually didn't just take a hit and let it go. They released something of their own called Google Bard. And basically it is the exact same as the new Bing. However, it's from Google, obviously. And they call it an important next step on our AI journey. They had an event today. I think it was called Paris Alive. However, everyone was expecting the event mainly to be around this Google Bard, but they pushed it towards Google Lens, multi-search, and just Google Maps. However, Bard wasn't actually the highlight of the event. They didn't talk much about it, and considering that yesterday was the event about the new Bing, we hoped that Google would have more information on the Bard. So this is a blog post from two days ago by the CEO, and here they talk about how BART actually works. But here is an interesting part. So just like the new Bing and unlike ChatGPT, they scrape the web and they find answers and give references to them. And they have access to the newest information. So for example, here they give a prompt as an example, explain new discoveries from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope to a nine-year-old. And it gives information. So. Later on, I'll actually compare the difference between the GPT answer and the BARD. The second amazing feature that they have showed at the press release was actually the new UI for the Microsoft Edge, their default browser. So as you can see on the right, they have the Bixby as part of their sidebar. And there are cool things you could discover for yourself. There is actually a button called Discover, which opens up all search engines and it's currently available. So this is an example for a LinkedIn post. As you can see, the chat has three buttons, Compose, Overview, and Site Info. And it actually has chat, I believe that's clickable as well, even though it's not super clear. So Compose actually realizes that you're writing something and you can change the tone, format, length, and you can generate the draft. And you can actually view it before the publish. So the fun part in here is that they are trying to reduce all your freeform style and create it more of suggested clicking. So by choosing a tone, format, and length, that saves you a few words of actually telling the GPT of how you would like it to feel. You can just click. So in the future, I would expect something just purely simple buttons of what they know that you usually do based on your history, and they just give you the buttons to click so you can pose a message immediately. And that is something I want to have, you know, as part of glasses, so I don't actually have to talk to people, kind of antisocial but so i just click somewhere like in the air imagine how it would look like when i talk to a person and then i just click in the air anyway and then i actually spit out what i want to say so anyway moving on that is how it looks and it's pretty decent and it's super clean and i actually really like it that brings us to a test what i decided to do is i decided to take the prompts that they use as examples in the advertising including google's bard and new bing and actually put it inside ChatGPT to see how the results are different. So on the screen now, you have ChatGPT at the top and you have Bart at the bottom. So the prompt that they Google used in their advertising was, what new discoveries from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope can I tell my nine-year-old son about? So the point was that Google Bart can scrape the internet and it can simplify information to the extent that a child would understand. If you actually scroll down, that was quite fascinating for me. You can see there is a huge different in, difference in the results. So, for example, we asked it to give us new discoveries. And Google Bard actually gave us that in 2023, blah, blah, blah. So they gave us a specific date. That is not something common for ChatGPT. It doesn't usually do that. And funny enough, there was a reference to Greenpeace. Obviously, I haven't watched it, but... Greenpeace just tells me that Google Bart really understood the task and it could easily explain it to a child because child would obviously remember the Greenpeace better. However, for ChatGPT itself, I would say the content is too complex for a nine-year-old. You have things like here, formation of the first galaxies. You could really simplify a lot of things. Some parts I wouldn't even understand. 
For example, exoplanets and search for signs of life. Life, that is actually a good example. So you can see that exoplanets was actually used by Google as well as part of their answer. However, they gave a definition at the bottom. They gave a definition that exo means from outside because it's a child. And basically overall, this just creates an image that Google Bart will be much better at understanding prompts and giving actual information. So overall, that is just really impressive of how good it is at understanding. So super excited to see. Okay, here's another interesting one. What cars should I consider buying that are all wheel drive, go 0 60 in less than six seconds, steal six or more and have decent reviews? So I have tested Bing and ChatGPT for this one. Actually, it's quite impressive what Bing gives because I have asked it to have decent reviews and it has actually linked, for example, 2020 World Car of the Year that was given to Kia Telluride. So that is quite interesting to know. And for everything that you have here, you obviously have a link. And this is much more credible. Like I would believe those results. For example, GPT, it just kind of threw the answers to me just for me to see the cars. It didn't actually link anything, maybe at least the source, it never does. So sources is a big part of the game. And by having this, you just get more credible information, something that you can check and believe for yourself. So overall, that is an insane step in AI, considering that both companies have voice assistants from the past over the years. And this is a huge step for them. And they always have a fight, for example, Google Assistant and Cortana. Some people like the features of Google Assistant, some like of Cortana, and there is nothing to complain because very, they are both very similar. But in my opinion, for example, Google Assistant is much more visually appealing. And there is always going to be the fight between the two now for the AI. Actually, just from this announcement yesterday, Bing has already seen a 10x jump in downloads. Even though they attracted the customers to download for better access, still, it is showing that people are highly interested in this. So to really summarize the difference, it is extremely useful that Google Bard and Bing, they will give instant replies. Even though ChatGPT has a subscription now with priority and has potential to actually give instant answers, it doesn't give it quite yet for free. And the free version is actually really lagging. So maybe they will improve the service later on. Second, the information is way more credible from those search engines because you have references and you can actually credit the author and it takes it a big step further, especially for students, for teachers, anyone who's actually doing the research. So you always have to put the bibliography. And lastly, the fact that it scrapes new information and doesn't rely just on its own knowledge just proves the fact that basically search engines are going to see a huge leap. And to be honest, if Bing releases first before Google, I might actually stop using ChatGPT and Google. I might switch to Bing fully. And I think that applies to the big 10x jump in downloads that they have. People are really excited to see it. Let me know down in the comments if you are going to switch from Google and from ChatGPT. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.